still that you that the next shit is called Illuminati because that's that's really what the Illuminati is on. That's why I put the K to it because right. I want the niggas is telling me about this Illuminati shit while I'm in jail, right? Like, like the dollars, dollars. Right, 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 right. That's another way to keep your self esteem low. That's, that's another shit. way to keep you unconfident. Right. And I'm putting the K because I'm killing that Illuminati shit. Uh -huh. Trust me. These motherfuckers wanted to kill you. Why the fuck they gonna tell Farrakhan? Why they gonna tell the Nation of Islam? Why they gonna tell this nigga in jail about the plan? How did he know? Right, right, right. right. How did it leak to him? Who told him? <laughs> Who told him? The Pope? Who? Cause they like the Pope and the money. Oh, uh, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. You so thinking about the money, you not getting the motherfucking right, 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 money. Right, right, Get the money, right, right. nigga. I don't give a fuck. Who face on there? As long as with my face points, put you, put that. I mean, it's funny because, like, you know, I think if you was if you was like deep in the hip hop, we was having that Illuminati conversation early. You know what I mean? So when it came out in um, on the internet and on social media, you know what I mean? Like, it was uh, it was already old hat for us. You know what I mean? Like, um, Pac was just saying like he called himself Illuminati because he wanted to kill that whole perception of people being all powerful and you having no say in your life, you know what I mean? So, you know, he read Machiavelli in prison and he was like, you know, that's what got me so powerful. I, I read and I learned and I pierced that veil. You know, sometimes people, you know, when they talk about Illuminati, it's like they're these dark figures that you can't do anything about. They control everything, they control it. You know, Pac was like, you know, we control our lives, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, it's up to you to educate yourself and to, you know, better yourself. And you could do it through reading, you know what I mean? You, you could get all, of, all the material that you're looking for, all of the um, accolades that you're looking for if you, you know, figure out how to grow your mind. Um, so he, he really was trying to, like, destroy the whole concept of, of Illuminati, you know what I mean? That, they don't have real control over your life. Do you personally believe there's something like that, Illuminati? I mean, there's a, there's a powerful people, you know what I mean? Powerful people do things to keep their power. You know what I mean? I don't think it has to be so mysterious or, or mystical. It's like, it's obvious, you know what I mean? Like Goldman Sachs is what people are calling the Illuminati. It's a bank that, you know, uh, destroys people's lives for, for profit, you know what I mean? Um, how far they go with the with the seances and the rituals and so on, I mean, that's already proven that people do that, you know, um, in colleges and, you know, they have these, like, you know, um, secret meetings and so on, like, that's that's not even a, a question anymore, you know what I mean? We, we know that, that that's what happens. But is it, a, is it a worldwide conspiracy? Is Jay-Z and Beyonce involved? Is all that? I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see the real uh, evidence of, of those kind of things. They certainly uh, uh, played around the thought of it, don't you think, with the whole, is this um, compilation of YouTube? Right. With videos, like, right. There's, a, there's a hidden message in this, there's a hidden message right. in that. You think is it is it really a hidden message, or you think this whole bullet dude just making shit up? I think a lot. I think people manipulate situations when that perception is out there. You know what I mean? Like I think people are playing with symbolism and and so on. Um, when you when you're doing um, theater or news or media, you know what I mean? Like, you want to create a narrative. You want to bring as much interest to your, yourself as possible. So if, if they're talking, if they're saying Rihanna's a Illuminati puppet, she's going to put it in the video. And then somebody's going to see it in the video and then start saying it. And then they're going to say it and she's going to have 3 million views because, you know, half a million people just looking for that Illuminati reference. The people in the media definitely playing with that, you know, but I don't know if how, how real, you know, how real you want to look at it if you think that's like some sort of satanic um, business or just somebody manipulating you into watching the video. You know, you got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, death row was just drama constantly. You know what I mean? There was every week there was a story of like you know them having to mop up blood at death row, or um, you know somebody getting assaulted, or champagne bottles getting you know being used as weapons to get somebody's mother's address. You know there there was a a constant problem going on and when Dre wanted to leave you know Tupac as a as a soldier you know followed Suge you know what I mean so he was attacking anybody that Suge deemed you know an enemy to death row did, did he seem happy at death row no that I could say for sure that he was ready to leave you know by the end of, by the time he you know, by the time he got to Vegas, he was asking for his PL statements because at that point, you know, he had sold so many records. He was, you know, waiting for his money, and every time he asked, they would just give him, they would give him a car that was owned by Death Row or give him a house that was owned by Death Row, and so he started to see through that, and that's when he was, you know, building Machiavelli Records and trying to like, you know, go his own route. Look, man, he, the, the reason why he signed with Death Row is because they came with a handwritten contract to get him out of prison. He, he had to get out of prison, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he wanted to sign with Death Row ultimately, but he saw that as his best vehicle. They were on top, you know what I mean? And it, it was like his immediate way to, to take care of his situation in prison, when he was in prison, to get out, to get back on to be put on the, 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 the biggest stage, you know what I mean? Like, deal with the best producer in the West Coast. So he did it, you know what I mean? But was he down with everything that Death Row was about? You know, that's debatable. You know what I mean? He comes out of a revolutionary Black Panther um, mentality. Mm -hmm. Suge was, was, was on some West Coast gang shit, you know what I mean? It's a different, it's, it, it's related, but it, it's different. You know what I mean? I think ultimately Pac was, was planning an independent move. That's just the nature of who we was. I feel like that, that was when we got him killed. That Suge Knight gangster shit. I agree. I think he, I think that is ultimately what got him killed. You know what I mean? But it's also what got big, big killed. Like, at that time, you gotta remember, like, it was so important to be real. You know what I mean? It was so important to have your your um your your finger on the streets. You know what I mean? Like there was a lot of things going on backstage and behind the scenes. If, if a rapper was going to the West Coast, they needed to have people on the ground that was gonna, you know what I mean? Um, not just protect them, but like hold them down. Like it's still that way, obviously. Like if you go to Detroit, you gotta talk to certain people before you make money in that city. Um, and it was that times 10 at that time, you know what I mean? Like everybody was very territorial about their cities. You you had to get a, you know, if you're going to Houston, you better talk to Jay Prince, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Going to um, New York, you want to have, you know, want to be allied to like Zulu and, you know what I mean, like um, if you're in Brooklyn, you better know some lowlifes or the, um, you know, the the OGs in, in any city that you, you're dealing with. Mm. You know what I mean, like it's, it, that's when I, like, because I went to Africa really looking for the roots of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. where it all comes from and then I like I got a deeper understanding of what what everything is because you know what I mean you got to think about what music is it's mm -hmm. like it's something that could destroy time you could you could be listening to music or at a party you don't even realize it's like suddenly four in the morning you mm -hmm. know what I mean you're right yo that that ability to destroy time makes all kinds of other things possible and just the power of the word if you say something you make it real that's what that's what Pac did he just mm -hmm. called death upon him he said it so many times that death came you know what I mean and then you look at Big that, that's a perfect example look when I talk about like mystical you know just we just started XXL mm -hmm. 
we put big on the cover. 97. March 97. That was the moment he died. You know what I mean? We didn't know he was going to die and then right. he'd be on the cover, but that's how everything was functioning at that time. You know what I mean? Yo. That's nuts. That's crazy, dude. Did, um, did the atmosphere of like, yo, these two guys, Big and Pop, they're going to kill each other. Was that, did it seem that way to the public? Did it seem that way to you? Was that obvious to us? Suge was the was really the X factor, you know what I mean? Like, I mean when when Pac came out with hit him up, you know he went so hard at Big that the the you know New York was like you gotta respond, and maybe that was not just gonna be on wax, you know what I mean? Um, and that that had been building for for a minute, and you know like that's when Mob Deep got involved, that's when the Dog Pound was getting bullets shot at the trailer. You know what I mean? So the whole environment was like, you know, at any point you could get, somebody could get got, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, in Atlanta, you know, Puff's bodyguard got killed, and but that was more related to the BMF thing, but um, that was just the nature of the, the game. Like if you was at the source of XXL, people call to threaten you regularly. You know what I mean? If they didn't like your, the way the, the article came out or, or what, what, you know what I mean? Like, people was ready to run to the guns, you know what I mean? It was really like that? Yeah, it was definitely, that was regular business, getting threats because they didn't like the interview or whatever, that was, that was pretty regular business at the source in uh, XXL. Before we started recording, you told me that, uh, that it seemed very obvious that Tupac was gonna, something was gonna happen with him. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to the music, he was calling for, for, for death in a way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I hear death around the corner, and all those lyrics were, you know, to me, like Pac knew that at some point his only way out was to become a, a myth. You know what I mean? To become a. Um, somebody who, who went all out for, for his art and um, his people. And, um, you know, you gotta remember, like he was facing at one point, like 50 trials, he had like 50 cases at one time. You know what I mean? Like, and it was, it was getting even more with death row. Like, you know, every day there was a conflict, every day there was like, you know, some issue with somebody somewhere and he, and he was, you know, putting himself um, in the um, as a target. You know, in the way he he uh, conducted himself. So, you know, I think he understood that he was calling for death. I think he knew it, and you could, like I said, you could hear it in the music. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see his legacy to be that big? This is like twenty years later. We're still talking about. People yeah, still talking. that was obvious that it was, he was going to be like. Um, like a legendary figure, you know what I mean? Just because of the way he died, it was like, you know, he died in Vegas. He was, he was staying in the Pyramid Hotel, you know what I mean? He died on the September 7th, and the, I mean, uh, he got shot on the 7th, died on the 13th, like, there was so many mystical aspects to his story. And it was so obviously like a, a, a fable, a, a fairy tale, you know what I mean? Like. The man in red, the, the, the man in red got him out of prison after he resurrected from a, you know, a shooting in New York. You know, the shooter was named King Tut. Like, he, you know, he was so in so many places, and he 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 um, he garnered so much love from so many different uh, parts of the world and parts of the industry and parts of the the country. That you know. You know, I was at the hospital when he died, like, you felt it immediately, like, this was not just historic, but things were gonna, um, that he was only gonna get bigger in death. The, the people that were there basically were like the security from death row, family members, you know, and like press like me, but there was probably like only like four or five of us from the press 
but the the, um, the scene was like you know everybody was just tense you know and you you waiting every moment to find out what what's actually happening and then I remember the day of I just happened to get there like right on time I think I was there for like 30 minutes the sugar came in you know what I mean he was smoking his cigar as usual and you could see the bullet fragment in his head but he was um he just had like this really um, foul aura around him, you know what I mean? Like it was like death followed him too, you know what I mean? He came in, um, went inside and then came out later. Then, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes later, the outlaws came out and I remember, you know, they were super upset and screaming on the nurses and, and you know, how could you let him die kind of thing. You know, and then, you know, you saw people coming out crying. And then a Fanny came out, you know what I mean? She wasn't crying, her face was just like stone. And um, she walked out. Um, and then, you know, you realize that was it, you know what I mean? Um, there was a lot of rumors beforehand, but that point everybody understood the hospital made the, made the announcement and it was just like you know you just felt this like um, this change in the air when, when you know what I mean like then you just started seeing all these people start gathering outside the hospital um, and like I said you knew immediately that he was going to be like legendary Yeah. yeah, we're like what twenty plus years later. Yeah, that was a movie about him. Sold millions of records. Sold. Yeah. Have you seen the trailer? I, I, yeah, I saw. Any thoughts? <coughs> it's a hard movie to make. You know what I mean? Like, it's gonna. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my judgment, but um, you know. I'm hearing, I'm hearing different things, you know what I mean? Like I'm hearing that it's not what it's supposed to be, and I'm hearing that, it, you know, it looks right. Were you, uh, any thoughts on the uh, Straight Outta Content movie? Um, what do you think of that? I, I really liked the first hour, you know what I mean? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah? Like the, the, the ending for me just seemed, uh, you know, it, it was, it got real kind of political. You could see that there was a lot of people involved in the, the making of that movie and everyone had to kind of tell their part, but I really, really enjoyed the, the first hour of it. The, the whole Tupac story, man, the, the, the man's life, like it seems really sad and tragic because he is, this guy that he, he wanted to change the world, do something for black people, all people, people from the ghetto, and then now it's, now it's over. You can't, you can't. Well, if you look at it from like, just a materialistic standpoint, it, it might feel like it's a sad story, but you know, Fanny named him Tupac Shakur, right? Tupac Amaru. Tupac Amaru was a, a revolutionary from Peru back in the conquistador days. And he stood up for his people and stood up for like the, the indigenous people and they killed him publicly. You know what I mean? The, 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 uh, the oppressors of that time. So that's why Fenny named him that. So in a lot of ways, he was the resurrection of that spirit. You know what I mean? Just in, in, in modern times. Um, so in a lot of ways, it, it kind of shows you that if you if you are if you if you committed. are truly committed to um, to um, to the freedom of people to the freedom of people you live forever you know you live forever body dies even if your body dies.